Hello everybody and welcome back to my book vlog. As you can see it is now summer in Britain so I have exchanged the bookcase for a hedge if only for a short time just to soak up all the rays but the subject matter is still the same. Today we are going to be talking about The House of Impossible Beauties by Joseph Cassara. Now I had been wanting to read this book for an awful long time. In fact, this book was published in January. However, I have only just finished it. And I think this is one of the interesting reflections about this book is when something you hope a book is about turns out to be something different and how you have to manage those expectations. So the House of Impossible Beauties made an awful lot of lists of people who, for people who were really pushing for books, advocating books. Everyone wanted to read this book because it was set in the world of Paris is Burning. Now, for those of you who don't know this film, please go and see it. It is one of the most famous and most celebrated documentary films ever made. And it focuses around the drag ball scene that came out in the mid 1980s in New York. This was a community of LGBTQ um, men and women who'd been pushed out from their families largely based around the black communities who were ostracized from the mainstream, often covering politics of poverty and racism. And it's how these communities came together to find something glorious and fabulous in the drag ball scene. And it's very famous uh, because it, the film not only has wonderful characters in it that you are just sucked into and are fascinated by, but it also shows the power of community because the reason why this is called the House of Impossible Beauties is around the drag ball scene, the LGBTQ community form themselves into houses, much as we have fashion houses like the House of Chanel, House of Saint Laurent. So in the world of the drag ball scene in the 80s in New York, you'd have houses like House of La Beja, House of Extravaganza, where these ostracized members, um, people, men and women, would come together and form houses like families to find community and bonding in a new world where they'd been rejected from their own. Now, the fascination around Paris is Burning is obviously all those uh, themes of how hard it is, was, is for LGBTQ communities in New York, and like I say, the poverty and racism, but also because it had the huge glamour of the drag ball scene where such creativity and such effort was gone into creating uh, a wonderful scene where we know but, but it's just been completely appropriated by the mainstream with things like voguing and also language such as shade and reading. So everyone was hoping, as you can see from the cover of the House of Impossible Beauties, that we'd be going back into this world of absolute glamour and competition and bitchiness and pride, and that it would be a really evocative book of the film. The problem is, this book isn't evocative of the film, and that is one of the real challenges for the House of Impossible Beauties. So Joseph sets his book around one of the houses from the film, House of Extravaganza, and uses the real life people from that house, Hector, Angel, the trans girl Venus and the young boys Dorian and Juanito. And the reason why Joseph picks the House of Extravaganza is it was because the first it was the first Latino house in the drag ball scene set up by Hector and Angel. Now, there's obviously, I suppose, all of the people, all those real life people, I think are now have now largely died, whether through AIDS or other causes. So I suppose there's a sort of moral ethos of how or this resurrection fiction that you're bringing people back to life and putting words in their mouth. But in truth, I guess that's no different from most historical fiction. What's challenging about this book is that it completely ignores the drag ball scene. I mean, there's barely a paragraph in this book on the drag ball scene and instead focuses on the world of the House of Extravaganza away from the drag ball scene. So it's basically about the hustle. It's about the broken families. It's about the peers. It's about the hard mean streets of the meatpacking districts. It is about sex work. It is about uh, AIDS. It is about ostracization. It is about family arguments. It is about where your community is. Um, it is about abuse, it is about harassment. And all of that world is so necessary and fascinating, but it just wasn't what this book was expecting. So what I was expecting from reading this book. So I picked up this book, read about 120 pages back in January, February, and I found it quite, I mean, obviously there was a shock of, there was, there was nothing to do with the drag ball scene, nothing to do with the, the glamour, the costumes, the, the community of that. It was focused around these five characters from House of Extravaganza and them only. And 
I, I was just, it was just so disappointing that it wasn't anything to do with Paris is Burning, even though this book is heavily marketed around the fact that it is so connected to that film. So I ended up putting it down after about 120 pages. But I came back to it because I really wanted to not be disappointed. I really wanted to come back to this book with a fresh pair of eyes and setting aside my own expectations. And I'm glad I did because actually this book is one of the most realistic, non-sensational pieces of work I've read about the LGBTQ community, particularly trans women. I thought Venus, um, who's a very famous character from the film, uh, is beautifully represented here and nothing is sensationalized or over dramatized it is just real life for people who do not normally get such sensitive mainstream representation there are challenges with the book in that it doesn't really have a shape so th this feels like more a sort of series of scenes of vignettes of moments of drama sewn together, weaved together to have a beginning, middle and end. So you will, I know some readers will find that there's perhaps a lack of dramatic arc to keep the attention going. But actually on reflection, I've enjoyed this book a lot more and I'm so glad that I went back to it because no, it's not glamour, it's grit. And yes, there are some lines in here that are <laughs> lifted straight from the film Paris is Burning. I can hear the characters. But I'm actually glad I read this and I think it's a really interesting alternative side to the lives that were so celebrated in the famous film. So if you like Paris is Burning, this is worth reading, but you're going to have to, like me, temper those expectations. This is The House of Impossible Beauties by Joseph Cassara.